So let's say we have this little kind of house uh, with six columns. We have the distance of 10 feet and the distance of 5 feet. Then we have a table of 10 pounds per square feet and a lot of 80 pounds per square feet. So let's say that we want to know how much load it is gonna be, gonna be taking and what are gonna be the reactions in here. So the way we calculate that, we basically first calculate the tributary area. For the sake of easiness, let's say that this is five, the distance from here to here, five feet. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna calculate half of this distance. This is gonna be your tributary area. But tributary area, it means how much load it is taking from all this load. So for example, this load, this, beam, this is going to be taking this, this beam on top, these beams are going to be taking this, and these beams are going to be taking this. So this is going to be your, your section. So the way you calculate that, you're going to convert your PSF into a linear load, and we're going to do it with ASD just because it's easier and you don't have to do all the 1.21 and 1.6. So what you do, you multiply the temp PSF, times the times half the distance of here, so it's 2.5 feet, plus the libel, that is going to be 80 PSF times 2.5. And let me grab my calculator real quick. Um, and this is what's going to do, is going to convert this load into a linear, linear load, load. So 10, 100 times 2.5 is equal to 250 PLF plus 8 times 2.5 is equal to 200 PLF. So you're going to have a linear load of 450 PLF going into this beam. So PLF means linear foot, so basically what you're going to have, you're going to have a distributed load in your beam, like this. And the distributed load is going to be a distributed load, or 450 PLF. Now these loads are just numbers that I made up. They are not like for applications, purposes, or anything. Don't, so don't think too much about it. And from here, you can start assigning your beam. You can calculate the loads, the moments, the reactions. Uh, so for let's calculate the the reactions and the maximum moment. So for to get the maximum moment in a simple span beam like this, what you're gonna do, you're gonna well, let's say this like this instead, because you're gonna convert this into columns. Your maximum moment at this section is going to be weight times your length square over 8. So your weight is 450 times your length. Then it's going to be this distance here. So it's a 5 feet beam square. 5 feet square times 450 over 8. So you're going to have a moment of 400. Pound feet. This is going to be your moment. So basically, your beam has to be able to support this moment. Now, for your reactions, and for sure, your shear design, what you need to do, you calculate the reaction. So let's say 450 times 5, sorry. 405. This gives you a load of 250. So you're converting this load into a point load in case you're not. Then let's say it's at 2.5, and because there's nothing else going on, let's assume that it's equal. So basically, what's going to happen? Reaction one plus reaction two is going to be equal to 250 pounds. Okay, and just by simple analysis and stuff like that, you're going to assume that each reaction is going to receive half of this load. So this would be reaction one and reaction two would be equal to 2,250 over two. So this will be your shear, maximum shear. So basically your beams has to be able to take this load and has to be able to take this load. Then, the, usually when you are designing a beam, you, you first check for a moment, because that's usually the one that's gonna co cover the design of the, of the cone. Then after you assign this, you need to check for your deflection. Uh, I don't have enough space. But basically your deflection, you just grab a formula from the code or whatever, you can actually integrate actually the deflection formula, but why bother? There's a lot of formulas. I don't know the, the specific formula for, 
for the for simple beams, I think it's five over three, four uh, times something. Uh, e I W L four. I think this is the formula. I don't know. So basically, you just plug and chuck. Uh, you need to know what type of steel you're using. You need to know your cross section. So let's say you're using an I beam or whatever. You, you grab these values from, you can actually compute these values or you can grab it from the code the same with the ADE value and then you plug and chuck and you you see your deflection and you based on your allowed deflection it could be over 360 or over 200 or I don't know whatever is, is defined by the designer or by the contractor so basically that's how you would design a simple beam for, for our building